Okay. Okay. So now okay. it started recording. All right. Uh, let's start. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on wherever you are in the world. So welcome to the SCM Champs uh, SAP Digital Supply Chain Community Session with uh, Christian. And then uh, he would be talking us through about how to make your business future ready uh, with SAP Yard Logistics. So Christian, uh, over to you, just a brief introduction, and then we can proceed. Yes, and hello from my side. My name is Christian Reinhardt. I am the global product owner of the SAP Yard Logistics, and I am the head of the product area transportation and logistics at SAP. And in this role, of course, I am also responsible for other sort of logistics solutions at SAP, but we will talk about the SAP Yard Logistics today. Sure, thank you. And let's proceed. Okay, so um, as I as I already said up front, I I stopped sharing my video because um, yeah I don't like seeing myself all the time. So SAP Yard Logistics, and um, I'm not sure if all of you know SAP Yard Logistics already. If not, then we have here a very short introduction. So what is the aim of the Yard Logistics solution? So Yard Logistics solution, of course, the aim is to streamline the planning, execution, and settlement of the yard activities with full integration of the backend processes. So what does this mean? Yeah, we want to be able, or we are able to do the planning of the yard activities based on incoming workload from an SAP transportation management, for example, or from an SAP ERP shipment. Then, then we, are, we are, of course, able to do the execution of all activities in the yard from check-in to check-out, movement, cleaning, maintenance, and so on with integration to the EWM or to a plant maintenance, for example, and to the business network for logistics for dog appointment scheduling. And finally, we have the topic of the settlement at the end for the yard activities. So usually someone also wants to earn money with the activities in the yard, and therefore we can, we can also do settlement. And here we are, um, have the integration with, again with the SAP transportation management for the charge calculation. And of course, also with the ERP invoicing component. So overall, the Yard Logistics, as you already recognized, has a very broad set of standard integration in different backend scenarios. And we are also offering APIs that can be used to do custom integration in different scenarios. And the next topic is that we want to, in order with Yard Logistics, you can increase the visibility of um, the transportation units in your yard, of the movement of the location and so on. Um, first of all, what's the transportation unit? So a transportation unit is a truck, a trailer, a rail car, a vessel and so on. So it's everything that can be moved inside the yard or in and out of the yard. And also um, with, the, with, with the yard logistics, we can have a 3D layout of the yard. And this helps, of course, to always have the information about the actual situation in the yard. So where are empty locations? Where's my transportation unit at the moment? Where is it going to? And so on. Then one topic is also, of course, reduction of waiting times during check-in, for example, or also during yard movements. This means the solution is also able to, to, um, to speed up the operation in the check-in and the check-out. Um, for example, by means of automatic um, um, check-in activities based on cameras and license plate recognition and so on. And also for the yard movements, for example, with geofencing, you can automatically create yard movements, you can automatically confirm them. So this, of course, really speeds up the operation and ensures also not unnecessary waiting times are avoided. Yeah, and finally, we have the mobile environment, which is visible here in the screenshot. So here we have a mobile screen of the Yard Logistics, which can run on any mobile device. And based on this, and also based on the IoT part of the Yard Logistics solution, we have the possibility in order to uh, allow fast decisions and also to speed up the operations and um, also avoid errors um, due to inspection processes and so on. Yeah, here we also have a desktop UI, but we will see a, a, a glimpse of the UI later during the session. 
So um, what is uh, what is actual status of the art logistics? So we have yeah, the art logistics solution is a cross and global industry solution, a global and cross industry solution. This means we are not limited to a specific industry and we are not limited to a specific country. Um, also, we are not li limited to a specific mode of transportation. We can handle every mode of transportation, let it be um, truck, trailer, um, container, vessel, rail car, barges, cars, and so on. So there are a lot of different modes of transportation in a yard that can be used and we can manage all of them. At the moment, we have around 140 customers and around um, 10 industries. Um, so 10 industries means we have retail as well as consumer products. We have mill and mining. We have transportation and logistics, automotive. We have a very big footprint in automotive chemistry. So it's really, really, really very broad and, and very diverse also from the process scope. And the solution can be used in more than, is used at the moment in more than 15 countries with over 30 live customers. And also a huge number of projects running. And most of our projects are running with partners and um, we have very good experience with these partners and um, based on, on the input of the partner, of course, we also do uh, reshape our solution, which means we often um, add functions and features that are requested by customers or by partners. And this is also very important maybe to know for you. So um, the Yard Logistics keeps evolving and we are building new functionality over time. Okay, so yes, of course, with the Yard Logistics, like with a lot of other SAP solutions, there is uh, different, different deployment options. And, and there's one kind of old deployment option where we can use um, SAP Yard Logistics on a NetWeaver-based version. Um, this is still available, but um, not really the version we would go for. So for us at the moment, what we are also talking about today is the SAP Yard Logistics as an add-on on the SAP S for HANA. And this means you can run the SAP Yard Logistics on a central SAP HANA instance as well on a, as on a decentral one. Both scenarios are possible. And of course, um, there are different um, pros and cons for every scenario. It's hard to now say you should go for this or that in this um, in this and that um, situation. However, just important to understand that there are the different scenarios and um, that it's possible to run both of them. Yeah. And then finally, we have, of course, also the cloud edition for SAP S4 HANA. So we have a private cloud edition for SAP S4 HANA. And this one, again, is also available as uh, central or as also as a standalone version or a decentral version. So here also you have the same flexibility like in the SAP s on-premise version. Okay, so now we are going a little bit into detail in the functionality and uh, we will learn a, a little bit more about the SAP Yard Logistics. Um, I, have, I have noted down, um, first of all, I have noted down some benefits of the recent version of the Yard Logistics that we released. So it, it's the benefits of the Yard Logistics released 2021. And here we have, in, we have added a couple of very nice, very important new features. One topic is um, execute and optimize birth scheduling in the Yard. So this means we, have, we are now doing really optimization for this scenario. So we are able to optimize the births, for example, according to available cranes or to available pipeline and so on. <clears throat> and yeah, this kind of scenario is very important if you take if you take in chemistry customers or oil and gas customers, for example, but of course also for the big ocean carriers with containers. Then we have the second part, which is the second topic, also very, very important. It was claimed for quite a long time that we are missing this. So therefore, I'm happy to say that we are now able to have Yard Logistics and EWM in the same client. Um, up before it was not possible, so it was possible to install in the same system, but not in the same client. And now we have enabled that this is also possible to run it in the same client. Then the next topic is something coming from the EWM and TM. I don't know, but maybe you have heard of this already. So for EWM and TM, they have introduced a new um, integration um, scenario, which means advanced shipping and receiving. This means um, it's 
possible now to integrate EWM and Yard and EWM and TM without any additional effort, so to say. So there's no need on configuring interfaces, something like this. All the updates from the EWM are directly running on the freight order and the TM, and um, this is possible in the central scenario, and this is all supported by the Yard logistics now. So also we are able to do this kind of automatic and immediate updates on the freight order without um, having to set up interfaces to transfer the documents to the yard logistics. Then we have the topic, which is again, something very nice and also implemented already by some customer before we did this. So we have now also added the functionality of geofencing to the yard logistics, where you can do an automatic posting of check-in, check-out, or all yard task related activities like um, creation, confirmation of a yard task, and so on. And this is, of course, very efficient. It's very, very fast to have this kind of support of process, and it helps the speed of the operation. Here in the last topic is the plant maintenance. Here we also now added the possibility to integrate yard logistics with the yard maintenance and with the plant maintenance in order to have the maintenance capabilities during the execution of the yard activities. This means if you have a container, for example, you determine that there's a damage, then you can move it to the plant maintenance to the to a specific area designed for plant maintenance. And in the back, there's an integration to plant maintenance from yard logistics, which can trigger the creation of work order, for example, and then after then you can do the and maintenance by executing the work order and the tasks. And afterwards, the yard execution can continue. So yeah, so these are the highlights basically from our current release. And now on the next slide, we will see um, a more detailed overview of the overall functionality of the yard logistics. And um, yeah, I'm not going to talk about all topics in detail. I already mentioned the integration part, so no need to talk about this one anymore. Doc appointment scheduling is important. Here we have an integration also with the logistics business network as an option, or you can run doc appointment scheduling also locally in Yard Logistics. Um, if you use the business, uh, if you use the version by the business network for logistics, then it's it's um, it's uh, more sophisticated, it's easier for the customers to access it, and it allows also self-booking scenarios by the carrier. And then we have um, the BI Plus, um, which is now supported for task planning. This means you can add um, rule-based um, tasks. Um, so this means you can, you can create rules for every activity, for every yard task, and based on the rules, the yard task will be created or there will be certain activities happening, like follow-up activities on, on questions or follow-up activities on inspections and so on. There you are very, very open. You have, you have a lot of possibilities. And also the business rules framework is already known from the transportation management, SAP TM. So um, there's also somebody maybe already knows how this works and it's not easy, not difficult. And also what's important for me, at least, it's no, um, conf it's no customization, no coding it's just configuration so you can you can configure the rules in your project so there's no need to do any programming for this um, then we have the yard order processing automation also quite important the yard order itself is our main document in, in the yard logistics and with the yard order automation it allows that you can have automatic creation of yard orders completion activation so all all the steps, all the status steps of the yard order can be automated somehow. And then also with the yard order processing, it's possible to have a very advanced um, error handling, meaning you can change um, yard orders very, very, uh, very, very open and without a lot of restriction after check-in or after the activation for the checkout. So there's, there's, really, there's really a lot of possibilities to correct yard orders and so on now. Then we have location determination stacking. This is more important for container terminals. Here it's about um, stacking the container the right way or finding a good place. And also about checking the maximum weight levels, for example, or the stacking height and so on. So there, there are again a lot of different things that are checked. Then we have measurements, checklists, and inspections. And here we have a topic which um, has uh, has um, some some specific 
um, um, parts of the yard, especially in the chemistry or so, where the customers, uh, where, where, where your uh, the chemistry um, um, customers need to, to ensure that, for example, a container stays in a certain temperature limit. And um, yeah, this is supported. So with the measurements, you can record those temperatures. You can have um, automatic recording via sensor integration. And also what's of course possible to have thresholds and to have al alerts and automatic follow-up actions based on these measurements. Checklists is something like a questionnaire. It's available everywhere in the yard for every activity and so on. And um, yeah, I can also um, show this quickly later to the, to the system. But um, more or less, it's, it's really um, answering yes, no questions, but also with the possibility to configure follow-on actions. And then finally, we have the inspection. Inspection is the most detailed um, topic here. So it's, it's offering and the possibility to um, set up inspections quite flexible. And these inspections can cover different steps, like different things to be inspected, different findings and finding details, also allowing to enter free text, to take pictures and um, to add pictures to those inspections and also to do follow-on actions. And yeah, with these inspections, then you have really a comprehensive um, tool that allows you to do um, simple QM tasks directly in the yard. Um, typical example here is, for, is also if you have a car yard where you store vehicles, for example, and someone goes there and has to inspect the windshield. This is a typical inspection, which is then done with such a transaction. Uh, birth scheduling optimization, I already talked about. Mobile yard execution, also very important. Important. So we are coming with a set of mobile applications for yard task creation, yard task execution, as well as inspection execution and self check-in. And those mobile applications can run on any device. So they are built on Fiori technology. Um, they are not native to any specific app, to any specific iOS or Android um, um, system, but it's really um, based on the browser. We have the yard layout I already mentioned. We have the IoT enablement I already mentioned. Then we have the billing of the yard tasks. Also, this for most customers is quite important as you always want to gain money out of the yard activities. Not only, um, not only see what's happening, but also maybe charge someone internally and externally. And this is supported here with the integration with SAP Transportation Management. And then we have the exception handling, uh, also quite important important as not always any, everything is going as planned in the yard and therefore we need inspection handling. And we have the printing so you can print documents at any time during the process. We have also the self check-in functionality where, um, where the, um, the yard operator can do a self check-in into the yard and can, can do uh, will be, will be uh, the system will guide him to a transaction with different steps. And during this, this transaction, he has to record and confirm data until we, uh, the system ensures that all the data he enters is correct and that, uh, that everything is compliant and that everything is as expected. And based on this information, then either the check-in is, is granted or the check-in is denied. We also support internal processes like um, like internal movements, rearrangement, and so on. And there we have also internal yard orders and internal yard processes, also cleaning and something like this. And last topic is classification of transportation units. Um, this is also interesting because here you can you are using the class system of SAP with characteristics, and you can define uh, by characteristics. If you need a container with a specific color, with a specific um, heating, cooling engine, with um, specific other attributes, and the system helps you to find, to determine this container and to validate the container you are taking is the right one, in order also to ensure that the right container or the right asset, better to say, it's not, not limited to a container, the right asset is on, on the right time at the right place in the yard. Okay. Um, so now I was talking functions and features, going back a little bit to the benefits of a yard logistic solution. And also, yeah, I, I don't want to read all of them to you. And for me, it's important to understand that based on the reliable SAT te technology we have in our background, um, the yard logistics is also working 
like all the other SAP solutions in a very reliable and very stable way. And also with our comprehensive integration scenarios to do a lot of logistics components, which I have already mentioned with the yard logistics, you are really uh, have a yard management solution, state of the art, which supports a lot of posts and so on. Yeah, we are providing this end-to-end -end yard uh, visibility, which is also important for, for a lot of customers. They don't have it. So usually some or most of the customers only have point solutions that are covering a check-in or that are covering a yard internal part, but they're not covering really the end-to-end -end process. And with our solution, we really, really, really get the end-to-end -end yard visibility. And, and ah, this is also quite important to have the scalability of the processes, meaning you can start small, you can start easy, and then go large or more complex by doing the rollout or by doing further implementation of the yard logistics. It's an automated, you can set up automated processes, full, fully automated processes. And with this one yard platform, you really, really have the possibility to replace different smaller solutions in the yard. And the yard logistics can then fit in the system landscape like the puzzle piece with these integration scenarios I mentioned already. And yeah, it's, it's also global. So we have a lot of um, languages and so on. Okay, so yes, this is now all about the uh, benefits and so on. And the next part would be that I would like to show you the yard cockpit and there I would like to go into the system. So here, here already you see the yard cockpit. So there's one yard cockpit for um, a truck yard, for example, here and that's down here is for a, a car yard. But let's, let's have a look into the system and see how it looks like. So there we are. So let's go in first here. So this is the SAP Yard Logistics. This is our solution in the Fiori Launchpad. This means you, the, the solution normally can be run completely by a browser. So there's no need to install any software locally. And this kind of launchpad, of course, is configurable. So you can remove items. You can move them from A to B. And you can, you can of course, set it up user-specific or specific with the depending authorization and so on. And here we find our yard cockpit when launching it. We can start a yard cockpit like this one. And this one example could be a chemical yard with silos, with here with freight cars and filling scenarios. And here are also trucks and trailers with, with container on top and so on. This is one possibility how a yard logistics could look like and what processes could be supported. But um, let's have a look on this one. This is now a yard for a container terminal. So this means here we see now um, containers stacked on top of each other. We see cranes, um, we see vessels, we see everything like this. And of course, also we can we see a rail connection. We can see containers loaded on trucks, different kind of containers here. And of course, I can always see the information per container and so on. So this is really, this is also quite nice. So here you have all this information. You also see color coding like this one. This one is blocked. So therefore, it's, uh, it's uh, red. It's red. So if I say, OK, move the block the system, immediately change the color. So this is also what you can do with color coding com configurable. Here you can define what um, you want to see based on colors, what should happen. And also, you can, of course, define what colors you need and so on. And all of this, uh, so all of this yard cockpit is configurable. It can be set up in a way that it's, <coughs> sorry, that's automatically refreshing and so on. And let me show you two more examples. So this is now, next one is a, a car, it's a, it's a warehouse yard so, or a truck yard more or less. So here we have a warehouses with doors and all this could also be production sites where we have doors and the system has um, moved the truck trailers to those doors. You have containers again. And um, here you really see um, how it's loading, uh, unloading with the EWM integration, for example. And then the last one is the car yard, which I would like to also show you. And here we have the after scenario with um, cars and vessels. We have 
many, many places here for very strong cars in a row, for example, with fin numbers. And yeah, here you see um, also um, the trucks for loading cars and uh, rail cars for loading cars. So, and of course, the vessels and so on. So this is also a scenario where at least I see a huge potential with the art statistics. So a lot of customers are asking for scenarios like this. And therefore, we have set this up. Okay, so now going back to the other one and um, going back to the presentation, I would like to talk about it. Ah, no, one moment, one moment. Let me, let me quickly show you also what you can do in the yard. So maybe this is something I missed already. So I was just showing the visualization. So it's also possible, of course, you can deep dive into these objects by clicking here. You can see details, you can block it, update the weight and so on. And what you can also do is yeah, you can just click here and click here and then you can move such an object. So the system will, will ask you, okay, what's the activity that's important? And then you can also say it's immediately available for execution, or you can also say it's immediately confirmed. So this means no one is doing it. If you just do it like this, then someone in the mobile device gets the task to move this asset. So let's do, do it like this and this. Then the truck is immediately moved from A to B. And this kind of movement is possible, of course, for all objects you see here. And also, also as I said, so there's no need to do it immediately. So you could also say, okay, this task is not immediately confirmed, but it's handed over to a mobile device. And let's have a look how this looks like. If we say, okay, we don't do this like this. And then we can go here. And here we have the mobile transactions where I can say, okay, I would like to see a yard task with a manual selection. And here I have the task I have just created in order to move my truck, it's the truck, from this bin to this bin. And, um, but it's, and when I press start, I can, for example, also change the destination bin if I, if I have if I have some something, for example, it could happen that the destination bin is blocked somehow for any reason, or there's something else standing. Then I can also take pictures um, and the mobile device, if I have a mobile device and it's using the camera on the mobile device to take pictures, I can have the questionnaire where I can answer these questions I talked about. I can have the manage measurements where I can record the measurements like temperature, fuel level, humidity, and so on. The serial numbers, um, few details, and of course, finally the exceptions where I can record my exceptions. For example, here the exception could look like this. So it's it's what I have configured. And yeah, so now I confirm this. And going back to the yard cockpit. Yeah, you see it's immediately moved over. Um, so I, I have pressed the refresh button, but it's not necessary because we have an automatic refresh every 20 seconds here, which is configurable again. However, I just wanted to have it immediately refreshed. Okay, so yeah, going back to the presentation and um, talking a little bit more about um, the art logistics. Next part is the LBN, LBN, so the Business Network for Logistics. Here I have, I have put in the screen from them. So they also have a, have a, a launch pad like we have. The art logistics and here you have the self booking for carriers, for example. And if you book an appointment here, then it's automatically sent over to the art logistics. Or on the other way around, if you have configured the integration with the network from the logistics and you create an appointment in the art logistics, it's automatically visible here for blending. So both ways are possible. And as this solution is cloud-based, of course, it's quite easy for the customers and for the carriers to access the solution and to do the blending while the art logistics to do the execution afterwards. The next one is the birth planning. So the birth planning is, um, is, is also a solution what I was talking about earlier, where we have the births that can be planned based on availability of cranes or of pipelines and so on. And here you see the different births at different times and the vessels that are here for, for, for on those births for a certain time. And um, the, as I said, the system can do this automatically based on optimization. So if you press birth planning, start birth planning, then the system runs the optimization with a lot of settings and a lot of 
configuration you can do. And then afterwards, the system will output you the best plan for the next weeks according to your selection here. Okay, then we have the topic about the business rules. I, I already mentioned this. However, I would like to reiterate that it's really nice that you now have the complete control over the Yatas handling and the dynamic follow up events. This means if you say, okay, my, my door, for example, is becoming free, you can set up the system in a way that it checks automatically for other transportation units that need to go to the same door and then automatically sends a call off to those transportation units in order to ask them to move to the door now. And yeah, this is, again, it's very time efficient. It ensures that not, no one forgets manual steps and it also ensures that everything goes quite fast in the yard and nothing is um, left behind. One moment, please. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I'm back. Okay, so now um, let's let's go to the next point, which is the advanced data processing. This is where, where I said, okay, we are now offering the possibility to really change the yard order after the processing has started. So for example, after check-in posting or after check-out posting, this is possible. And uh, yet it's also kind of, kind of very important because um, um, especially if you say you have container vessel or you have a train or something like this, it's not possible before you do a check-in posting to check every transportation unit to count them and so on. But um, yeah, you you might do just a rough check and then you do a check-in and afterwards there's a really an inspection running and now they figure out that some items are missing or something is wrong or something is switched. And all of this can be, can be um, updating the yard order directly. So you can add items, you can remove items, you can create a, the movements directly after the check-in and so on. It's it, it now, it's really a new level of flexibility. It was not possible in the older version of the yard logistics, but now with the newer versions, we have all of this available. This is the this scenario I talked about, this advanced shipping and receiving scenario with the TM and the EWM. So if you use this kind of scenario and um, with the yard logistics, you we have to see, okay, all the postings from the EWM and from the yard logistics are going directly to the freight order object. And there's no transportation unit handling in the EWM anymore. And in the yard, of course, we still have the yard transportation unit because we had we moved this around. But all our updates are going directly to the freight order. So there's no, there are no updates going to the to um, to um, interface or something like this by replicate data, but they are immediate, immediately going on to the freight order. Okay. So now I would like to go back into the system and I would like to show you a, a yard order and would like to talk a little bit about this one. One moment. Okay, so let's go back here into the menu. And I have a yard order and I would like to show you. It's a very small yard order it's just for one truck. And um, I just wanted to show you what we can do here. If, if So we have now the yard order, it's the inbound yard order, it's an active one. So this means the processing has already started and um, but the execution status has not started because there's no task created for this um, yard order. Now the system can be set up in a way that it creates those tasks automatically, that you do it manually, that you have all the tasks lined up front or that you create them step-by-step step after confirmation of one task, the system checks what should be the next task and creates them. So all of this is possible. Then we could have here driver information. This scenario, I did not enter it. And down here we have, which is more important, we have the content. So here, here you see what's in the truck and what's in the trailer, what's in the container and so on. We have the loading scheme for loading the items on top of each other and showing that they are loaded properly. And then we have document scheduling, as I said, with the EWM, TM integ uh, EWM integration, uh, sorry, with the local document which is getting all the logistics, the business network integration. And then we have also the warehouse business for the EWM integration. And we have the classification data I mentioned before, where you could set up something like, it's I want to have a reefer container or, or something like this. Here, 
it's also possible um, after the check-in that we could say, okay, we reverse the transportation unit. If we click this button, then the transportation unit that is here checked in will be checked out again. And um, it's also possible by um, adding a new item, it's possible to have a new TU in the yard. So let's, let's add a new one. And now if we go, if we go to the yard cockpit, one moment. We now have the new to you, EWM 200 immediately standing here because it was, it was created and immediately checked in as it's now available for processing in the yard after the, after the creation. And then going back to the yard order, what I want to show you also is the questionnaire. This kind of questionnaire is completely configurable. It can run in the mobile environment as well as in the self chicken scenario. And here you have the possibility to, um, to create questions like here with, um, with immediately using data in the system or also also like dangerous goods and so on and the system will will check will check um, after you have answered questions if the answer is okay and depending to the result the system will allow the check-in or not yeah so okay so now i have shown you all of this and i would like to go back to the slides and then go back to the final slides here Okay, so this slide is also important. So with the yard logistics, we are enabling a couple of IoT scenarios. So we are supporting um, like sensor-based integration of devices or um, these ge uh, geofencing I talked about. Um, so those kind of scenarios are predefined in the yards. We have our scenarios for this um, predefined in the yard logistics. And during the implementation project, then you bind the devices via, via your middleware to SAP yard logistics in order to ensure that the processes are running. So the data, of course, from of the device needs to be transferred to yard logistics from external sources. But then after this transfer to yard logistics and the yard logistics, we are doing all the processes and all the activities. And then I, finally, I would like to point you to um, our free trial version of the Yard Logistics. So when you, if you go via sap.com and the Yard Logistics page, then um, you, can, you can register for a free trial. The free trial is a cloud version of the Yard Logistics. It's um, in order to use it, you need to have a hyperscaler account like with AWS or Azure. And then based on this account, you can you can you will get um, a yard logistics solution deployed there and you can use it for 30 days and during the time you can explore and you can you can configure and you can there are also pre-configured scenarios in there and you can explore them you can configure and own scenarios and you can can do everything what you want with this solution so it's really really flexible and after the 30 days either you give it back to sap it's just switch off or you can even say okay i would like to keep it and i can co will continue with the usage of the art logistics after i have purchased it okay yeah yes and with this i'm already at the end of my session so i hope now for a lot of questions so please feel free to ask or if there are any other other topics um please um, also um, ask ask or get back to me Thank you very much, Christian. So let me start with a few of the questions that I have. So is there any uh, offline app available since yards are basically, you know, uh, we don't really get proper internet connectivity. So is there any offline app available? Um, it's it's not yet available, so we have we have planned for it. So we have already uh, made our plans. It's part basically on our industry funded roadmap, but it's not yet available. But yeah, as I said, it's planned. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, uh, coming to the next question. So what is the recommended EWM solution for yard logistics? Is it 
uh, will it work well with embedded EWM or uh, it will work uh, you know efficiently with decentralized? So what is the recommended solution? Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's a question. Difficult to answer. However, so um, we are supporting both. <laughs> so you can use Yard Logistics with the decentral as well as well with the embedded. And from the Yard Logistics point, the difference is there's no difference. So <laughs> it's working exactly the same with both transactions, with both, with both solutions. However, it depends what you want to achieve. So if you say, okay, I have a scenario where I need decentral EWM, you might also want to go for decentral Yard, and then um, these two would work together. Or if you say, okay, no, I, I, I'm working with central solutions, it's also working fine. So yeah, it's not really possible to say this is the best way. So it depends. Okay, so so you, you support both. So there's yes. no S recommendation. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. And then uh, I have one more question, uh, which says, so uh, the 3D images which you showed, uh, they, those can also be built in the building information modeling. So BIM is there. So can this also be integrated with BIM? Um, I Honestly, I don't know BIM, so therefore um, I cannot really answer right now if it's possible or not, but I've never heard of this component before, so sorry. Okay, fair enough. No worries. So uh, you, know, we'll, uh, you can research on this and then you can let us know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have one more question. So functionality wise, uh, uh, you know, someone wants to ask that, what is the difference between yard management and yard logistics functionality? Yeah, so it's a very good question. And yeah, this is something that which is asked very often. I have made even a slide deck only about this topic. And it's, it's um, the, the point is, um, so yard logistics is um, really a dedicated yard management solution. So we are focusing on yard management, while the yard management in EWM, which obviously was the base for the question, is, is something where you have a yard management as an add-on or as a part of the EWM, focusing on warehouse supporting functionality. Yeah, this means with a, with a yard logistics solution, you have, you have our mobile devices, you have our IoT scenarios, and, and this is from my example, from my point of view, more important, you have all these yard activities like cleaning, maintenance, stacking, location determination, and so on. But in the EWM, you really only have a check-in, a simple movement to a door, and a check-out. So it's a very, very tiny process, and it's only focusing on the on the warehouse. But with a yard logistics, actually, I uh, so I don't really care if it's EWM or if it's TM or if it's something else in the back or if there's nothing in the back. So I have also customers running EWM, uh, running yard logistics with TM only with no EWM, with no ERP and so on. And it is, this is also working. So it depends to the needs of the customer. However, for me, it's important to understand um, if you take yard logistics, you really buy a full-fledged yard solution focusing on yard. And with the yard management of EWM, you get something that is helping the warehouse to um, move in and move out the truck. Okay, okay, fair enough. So, uh, can we say that uh, you know yard logistics uh, can be run independently, whether uh, you have a backend of EWM or TM or ERP? If, if it is not there, it can still run independently. Yes, can also run independently. Um, of course, um, so you need, of course, the technical foundation for the installation, but afterwards, there's no need to use EWM or TM. So it, I have also customers running it completely with ERP, for example, or I have also customers running it with legacy systems. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. And then uh, during the presentation, you said that uh, there are uh, still a TU is required from the EWM perspective. Uh, so uh, is it going to be the same model going further? So do we really need a TU in, in the EWM in order to use the functionality of yard logistics? Uh, maybe this was a little bit misunderstanding for how I, how I framed it, but no, um, no. So you only need a transportation unit in the yard, um, in the EWM, there's no need to have a transportation unit, especially if you think about this advanced shipping and receiving, there is no transportation unit available in the EWM anymore, and we are also supporting this scenario. So the transportation unit in EWM is not needed with the art logistics. It can be there, and if it's there, it can also be used. But if it's not there, the art logistics itself is also working without the transportation unit of EWM. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we are we are already going further at the moment. So for the cloud version, we want to release the artificial intelligence in the public cloud next year. So that's our current plan. And for, in this area, we are also going further in order to try to even even more separate the artificial intelligence in EWM. So um, at the moment, they are still a little bit connected in some areas, and this should be go away maybe in the next year. So we are not yet clear, but this is what we plan. Okay, okay. And then uh, one question which I think everyone would like to know the answer. So is there any certification available in Yard Logistics? Um, I, no, 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 I don't think so. We have course, we have an official training course for Yard Logistics, but I don't think it's a certification because um, at the moment, Yard Logistics as a solution, it's, I think it's still too small for something like this. So uh -huh. it's usually it's usually seen that it's still even even if the solution from my point of view it's really nice and so on, but still it's seen as a kind of niche solution that is not needed at every customer. Therefore, we have fun training course with customizing and so on, but we have no certification at the moment. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so coming to the next question, uh, it says uh, if we have RFIDs installed. In the container, so how can we, you know, track the truck movements within uh, the yard via 3D view? Can we do that? Yes. I know, for example, if you if you have the RFID, it's great. So if you have the, the I, I I suggest uh, or I expect if you have RFID in the container, you have to reader somewhere in the yard, and then when bypassing the reader, you just send the information to the yard logistics about the actual location, so GPS coordinates or whatever. And then the yard logistics can always update the visual visualization. So that's really great scenario. Yes, definitely. Okay. okay. And then uh, one question we have is, I think the, the answer is already yes, but then uh, let's hear it from you. So it says, WayBridge is integrated. You know, there is a standard integration available for WayBridge with, with VIL, right? Exactly. So we are we have an interface where you can integrate your weight purchase exactly and can update oh, the weight. Okay. 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 And uh, uh, so yes. So we, we so one question is that so do we need license to enable yard logistic solution in S for Hana? Yes. So yard logistics is a separate license. It's an add-on to S for Hana. So therefore, it's a separate license. Yes. Okay. 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 Fair enough. Fair enough. And then uh, one final question. So why do we define warehouse number in Yard Logistics when we, when we already have a warehouse number in EWM? That's a good one. Yeah, so this is, this is just, um, yeah, this is because we are technically using EWM at some point, as I said before. So we have, we have some, some areas where we use EWM, like the locations in the yard. Mm -hmm. And therefore we need um, to define EWM warehouse number, however, this EWM warehouse number is, is really one-to-one -one linked to the yard. And also if you if you say you have yard management, the EWM, you also have a yard number. So that's the same. And we, we are using the same concept because what we do, of course, uh, um, in back in the background during the yard task creation confirmation, we are creating confirming warehouse tasks in order to have all those tracking and tracing features from the EWM. And also when we create a location in the yard, we are creating a bin. Uh, warehouse bin, so to say, and mm. this this is the reason why we are using the EWM here also. Yeah, and then then one more reason is that if if say suppose uh, uh, yard logistics is being used independently, then you know there is no yes. EWM or or in TM in the background, you still need a reference. So that exactly. reference can be provided by the yard logistics warehouse number. All right. Exactly. Thank yes. You very much. And uh, if anyone has further question, he or she can type it in here. So we will wait for one minute for further more further questions. Okay, I think we have no further questions as such. So we can uh, uh, definitely close this session. Thank you very much, Christian for your time and for sparing, uh, you know, I know there, there were certain uh, uh, emergency in your home and then you still uh, managed to uh, take out time from your busy schedule. Thank you very much for your efforts. And then uh, probably after the new release or new version, we will call you again. Yes, well, I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me here and I really enjoyed the session. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you and take care. Thanks. Bye.